I'm Louisa from LA Trainer, Creative Made Creations Alum Success. I'm here today with Louise Dearman and I am so excited. She is a West End star. She has performed with some amazing people. I'm not going to say too much about her. I'm going to let her introduce herself. However, I'm just going to pre-warn you there have been a little bit of an ever with this um, recording. So the last 22 minutes is what we recorded originally and now uh, we somehow lost the first few minutes. I just wanted to explain why things might look a little bit different, the camera's in a different place, etc. Louise might have a different outfit on because we are doing this on a different day. It was just to explain myself really as to what's happened. Unfortunately, these things happen. Uh, I've been a little bit stressed about this to be honest and a friend of mine has come to the rescue and he has saved 22 minutes of this podcast. I'm just grateful that uh, Chris Merrick from Merrick's Solutions, gosh, I need to get his actual business name and put a link up because he has saved the day. Thank you, Chris. Anyway, back to the podcast. A big introduction to Louise Dearman and she is just going to talk about what she does, some of the people she has performed with and yeah, and then the podcast will kind of resume from when we're talking about lockdown. Um, so I'm sure once it gets going, you will understand what's happened. And then the last 22 minutes is just completely au natural. I apologise, but we wanted to still obviously give this podcast. Hello everyone. Technology, huh? Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Louise Dearman. I'm a musical theatre actress. I have been performing in musicals in London's West End and all over the UK for over 20 years. Um, I've performed in musicals such as Joseph, uh, Grease, Kiss Me Kate, Guys and Dolls, Jekyll and Hyde, um, Evita, Sideshow, but I'm probably most well known for being the only actress worldwide to have been cast as both Glinda and Elphaba in the smash hit musical Wicked, something I'm incredibly proud of. Um, I live in Brighton with my partner Andrew and our three-year-old little girl Willow um, and since having Willow I've decided to take a bit of a step back from musicals to spend more time with her and have managed to carve myself a wonderful concert career working with some of the greatest orchestras in the world. Um, I have performed in the BBC Proms as a soloist for the past five years. I opened the Festival of Remembrance for the Royal Family um, for BBC One. I have performed as uh, Josh Groban's guest on his UK and European tours. Um, and yeah, that is about it. So enjoy the lovely Louisa's podcast from LA Skincare and I hope you enjoy it. I'll, I'll start from that um, question about how how have I coped with lockdown but it um it it's definitely gone in in waves and at the beginning it was absolute panic at how you know the impact that this is going to have on us and I think as concerts slowly started to be cancelled it was initially just oh my goodness please please no more please don't anymore be cancelled and then you just suddenly look at the bigger picture and think I think this year is out actually um and then you kind of like many of us um just shifted gear into this come on let's be positive let's be optimistic let's do something so there were tons and tons of live streams you know concerts that I sat here in my bedroom doing a concert um that was live streamed for Lambert Jackson Productions it was really good fun no the quality wasn't wonderful um the visual or the audio but it was I think what people needed as an audience yeah. it sounds dramatic but that we still were in it we still had a purpose um and and I did tons of charity recordings. Uh, loads of people did, you know, had different people from all over the industry come and just sing a couple of lines on a song. Loads of stuff like that. And it was really good. And then that kind of calmed down a little bit. Um, and now I'm just kind of doing, like I say, my, my streamed concert. I'm, I'm actually going into London on Friday, which would just be bizarre because I haven't been on a train or anything like that. Yeah. Um, and that will be fun because... You know, there's just me and my musical director and have a nice time for a few hours. Um, and I'm teaching as well online. Oh, okay. I'm patron. I'm patron of um, the Wilkes Academy in Swindon. Um, my friends, Johnny and Nikki, are principals. And, and I, you know, we just chatted and I said, I'll do some online vocal technique and performance technique classes. And I'm really enjoying that as well. Brilliant. So I'm just trying to keep myself busy. I mean, being a mum of a three-year-old, obviously I'm busy anyway, but um, 
what I have loved really realize your friend, what your friendship group is and, you know, constantly contacting those people, checking in, making that, making sure that they're okay. And that has been a huge positive. My girlfriends from back home who I've known since I was like four, every single day we're on the WhatsApp group, every single day having a little chat. And we didn't do that before. We would check in every few months or something, but, um, so there have definitely been positives. But we just need to look forward and just think, look, I know it seems really daunting. And also financially, it's really worrying. It will come back <clears throat> slowly but surely. Yeah. Um, th and there is just nothing we can do. It's out of our hands. So really, there is no point getting worried and stressed, making ourselves ill over this. You just need to keep pushing forward in whatever way we can just to keep going. I think you're right. And I think, it's, I think it has actually really kind of... Um, it just made you realize what is important in life as in like your friends your family and actually spending that time getting in touch because it's so easy to get on that rat wheel of life you know everything just gets in the way and we forget what's important yeah sometimes. It makes you reevaluate everything doesn't it it just <laughs> makes you look at things differently and just think i was so like rushing around all the time before and and actually not fully appreciating it just doing it, just ticking off the job, moving on to the next one, obviously loving it when you're on stage, but you just kind of tick each job off and you don't really fully appreciate that you're there, you're working, it's a wonderful opportunity um, yeah. and you're doing what you love. I think when we all go back, it's going to be very emotional. I bet, yeah. Um, so did I see as well that you've been recording an album? I have. So before lockdown, way before Little Girl was a baby, I thought I need to record a Lullabies album. It's, you know, I sing to her all the time. Oh, um, I love the idea of doing it. And of course, being a mum, it's your time gets taken up yeah. doing mummy things. <laughs> and maybe I guess mm, almost a year ago, probably embarrassingly, um, I said to uh, my music producer, Ben Robbins, who's produced three of my albums, um, I want to do this. Do you know? Do you fancy working on it with me? And it's been wonderful. We got most of the songs done before lockdown happened. It was just experience, kind of quite therapeutic to go and just sing these really beautiful, gentle children's songs and lullabies. And I really wanted in between each song to have those calming sounds that yeah. I used to love listening to. And I'd be doing night feeds like the ocean waves and the wind blowing and the birds in the trees, all of those. So there will be a moment. The whole, the whole point was that I want it to be soothing for the adult as well as the baby. Yeah. So when you're rushing around and, or trying to do bath time or night feeds, you just want to stick something on to just calm us to do. So I've got one more song to record. So I'm going to do that on Friday when I'm already in London. Yeah. Um, and then it's done. And we're hoping, I'm hoping to announce the release date in the next couple of weeks, but it'll be very soon. And I can't, I can't wait for people to hear it because it's something a bit different. Yeah, um, definitely. And again, it's something nice that's come out of lockdown and all of that is something positive and nice that's come out of it so oh yeah i'm so excited i'm sure so many people will appreciate that see these out there but yeah probably not i'm sure parents find it calming but probably not as calming as what like you're saying doing something in between that's quite yeah it's it, different just just something a bit gentle because we're all used to belting everyone's faces and doing these impressive big notes and it's just some, sometimes nice to just sit and close your eyes and have um a nice calm atmosphere yeah um but i've loved it i've absolutely loved doing it um yeah i love it it's so good obviously normally i would ask you what show we've got coming up next but <laughs> well gosh, mm, mm. Who knows at the minute do they what's happening it's just not just a good month, time twice no i was meant to be going to vienna for two separate projects in this month alone um with the john wilson orchestra and um hollywood in vienna as well so two beautiful projects but um kind of funny you look through your diary as the month comes and you're like oh but you know and I also I had um, my big solo concert at the Cadogan Hall in London for mm -hmm. October and that's just been postponed until next year so oh. um it's disappointing but, but like I said earlier at least it's, it's gonna happen postponed. Like you say. of it's course not. it is it will happen it and will. we'll all be really wanting it by the time it happens that's absolutely yes at least it'll be a sellout <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> well I hope so so a random question through, um, what, is there anything you found you become obsessed with through lockdown? Like for me, for example, I became obsessed with eggs and ham. I love eggs <laughs> and ham, but I've started making them in these little like cupcake things and, and I've put them all on Facebook. 
and then I never even oh, thought yes. it was so impacting but the amount of people that have sent me their variations so I've got one with rich paprika in chili in stop uh, it yeah it's amazing <laughs> so, I don't know if there is anything I mean I I was kind of, at the beginning, it was all, oh, I'm going to bake and I'm going to cook all this fresh stuff all the time. And yeah. I, oh, the, the thing I became obsessed with at the very beginning was arts and crafts. Okay. And like, it was hilarious because I was so, like, I've got to keep Willow entertained and busy and happy. And so every day there would be something new to make and I'd have everything set out on the table yeah. and the glue and the glitter and everything. And then I'd post it on Instagram. I think people probably noticed quite soon that lasted a couple of weeks. Then suddenly <laughs> I was like, I have run out of like caterpillars made out of egg box <laughs> and things. Um, so that was a bit of an obsession at the beginning. Um, but now, and then also the lockdown exercise thing. Yeah. That started really well, but that dwindled <laughs> out quite quickly as well. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, hit workouts. And it was like, cup of tea. Yeah. I think it is funny, like, what people have become obsessed with in lockdown. Or yeah. Not. You know, maybe it's just me that's just become obsessed with different things. Yeah. No, I'm sure you're not the only one. <laughs> sure you're not. But I think it's just been funny what people have done throughout. And it's kind of inspired other people. So I'm sure your crafting has inspired other people to do crafting with their kids. Or yeah, no, I hope so. I Would, what could you tell us about yourself that you think people might be quite surprised at? A random oh a random thing um with this like okay, i don't want this to get too kind of uh down or okay, dark no, but i think fine. but i think people might be surprised that um i don't have a massive amount of self-confidence trying to be open about it because yeah. i think people do expect I'm, I'm not i'm not not confident or unconfident i just yeah. um I think people honestly think that I just walk out on stage and it's really easy yeah. and of course I'm not nervous and that I'm just full of this self-confidence and it's just not true yeah. and I think I do think it's very important that people are really open about it because otherwise there are so many students I think it comes from teaching as well so many students who are even really nervous about me sat in my bedroom to, um, it's number one it's me and if you knew me well enough you would understand that you don't need to be nervous yeah. and number two this is hilarious you're sat you're in your dining room i'm in my bedroom when we're having a singing lesson it's fine but i think they don't believe me when i say i'd suffer with nerves and you know constantly questioning if what i'm doing is right or good enough or if i look okay all these things that people probably wouldn't believe um mm. so i do think it's important to, to voice it and say it out loud so that no one feels silly or on their own yeah that i've uh worked on throughout lockdown and just we're all the same basically yeah. realizing that everybody is the same it doesn't matter you know where you're from what you've got what race you are we all have struggled with this and we all struggle with things in our personal lives I and mean, you've just got to like come together and support each other absolutely i think it's it's so true i think so many people think other people are way more confident and i suppose when you do you see you you get out on stage in front of like thousands of people and you're like oh my gosh i could never do that you must be yeah confident. but people never see what's going off internally do they or anything no like it just shows never judge a book by its quality and i think um social media though is quite a dangerous platform because mm. it, of course all of us only put the nice pictures yeah. and the nice filtered things and the look at what an amazing time I'm having and look at all these wonderful things I'm doing. Yeah. And you just have to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt and say, that's a lovely picture. Um, they're having a lovely time, but that doesn't mean that someone's entire life. Yeah, that is just a tiny little snapshot. And so I think we just have to understand and be realistic and not feel like, you know, which, you know, I have felt before of not feeling like, Oh God, they're doing so much and they're so productive and they're so busy. And, and when you actually speak to these people, and it's kind of you have to get your head around there's a reason for people doing that yeah. and all of all of that and it does promote positivity and all and all of those things but you do have to be realistic and think that's not the, that's not the full picture yeah. and we have to all hold on to that i think i, I think you're right uh, somebody a friend of mine posted uh, something um a while ago now but she put like instagram picture of the kids around the table all with the perfect little bowls of fruit and it's yeah. perfect and then she took one like off Instagram and it was carnage <laughs> everything yeah. was everywhere and I thought you know what that is so true it's this perfect little life and that's all yeah. Instagram sees and then all of a sudden it's just chaos 
and actually that's more reality isn't it and you know we all want that perfect picture we yeah good and and stuff like that but yeah we're all in the same boat. But I, I, I love all those pictures of, I love all those, it was an Instagram versus reality things. Yeah. And it can be with like bodies. It can be one woman like posed at a certain angle and, and then just sat down with it and it all hang out. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, that's what we all need to see. We need to appreciate that's a gorgeous picture and that's a gorgeous yes. ideal, but yeah. um, it's not the reality really. So I yeah. love those before and after things. Definitely, Brilliant. I do. It's, it's funny because yeah, it is so true. Yeah, you can, you, sometimes you can catch yourself at the most perfect angle and you think oh my gosh I actually look all right there and then you, know, you look in the mirror and you're like yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah so not so much now all the same um, <laughs> amazing what a bit, bit of makeup can do and uh, <laughs> exactly always listen always just pop a bit on <laughs> definitely so um one last thing then um just something simple to finish on what's your favorite color pink Yay, although it's gone it's gone quite orange um no seriously blue is probably my favorite color okay. the, the sky it's quite a calming lovely color for me yeah. so yeah definitely blue i like it you have actually sang with some really sort of like famous incredible people like how does that feel when you are we talk about confidence and things like that how does that feel when you are next to someone and you're thinking you know like sort of like you might be almost in awe of them the way that you yeah are of you when you do the lesson like, how do you get past that? How does it make you feel? Um, I, do you know what? I, there's nothing better than singing with someone who's a huge star, but they're the loveliest person. And the best yeah. example of that I can think of is Josh Groban. Yeah. Because when he first invited me to sing with him, I couldn't believe that he'd asked me. I was, it was, that's another kind of self-confidence thing. I was like, are you sure? Do, do, are you sure he invited me back to sing with him like a couple of years later at the O2? And he's such a warm and generous, kind person yeah. that I never felt intimidated. I all, I, he's, he just made me feel equal. He made yeah. me feel like you're not, I'm not um, above you and you come on and sing a song with me and you should be very grateful. It, was, it never felt like that. He was yeah. always just very generous with his time and as a performer. And that's what I like. I don't like it when sometimes um, celebrity is used to kind of intimidate or make you mm. feel like you're not as good as, because yeah. as I said before, we are all equal. Some people get given these incredible opportunities, um, but that's the best example I can think of. Another one actually is Patrick Swayze. Oh my God, because... I love Patrick Swayze. I know he's not here, but yeah. honestly, I was so upset and I've not really lied about celebrities. Sorry. Uh, I got so away guy... <laughs> <laughs> no, he, um, we did Guys and Dolls at the, in the West End and, oh and he was in it playing Nathan and he just, again, we all were like, oh my gosh, are we, you know, should we speak to him? Should it be a bit awkward? And yeah. no, not in the slightest. Again, such a warm, lovely person. And I, I was understudying Miss Adelaide at the time and um, Samantha Womack went, went off. She was sick. And so I was thrown on with Patrick and oh I was thinking, yeah, okay, what do I do? I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> do, do I, honestly I went round to his dressing room and said um Patrick would you like to go through the show would you like to go through the scenes and he literally just said you know what you're doing right and I said yeah and he went I'll go with you let's just have fun oh, and it was the best thing he could have said and then mm -hmm. Patrick and his wife came to my dressing room in the interval and was so complimentary and so oh. lovely it just totally put me at rest because and yeah. understudying is tough you are walking into a role that usually you know some a big name or a celebrity is playing and the audience is sometimes disappointed if they're not on so you do feel that pressure but lovely famous people out there oh uh, do you know something i think i think you're right and i think at the end of the day we are all the same and i think that to me is a sign of a true um star really when yeah. you don't have to do that because no they've already got their you know positioning kind of thing they don't yeah. have to make other people feel beneath them to give exactly them sort of you know um validation yeah uh, oh i'm so glad i asked that question because <laughs> Josh Groban's fabulous. I don't get me wrong, yeah. but in Patrick, I'm like, oh my gosh! <laughs> so I'm in awe of that one. And um, <laughs> I've only ever seen his wife obviously on pictures and stuff, but she looks absolutely stunning. And I bet in real yeah. life, she's stunning. Yeah, stunning and just a beautiful woman, a oh, lovely woman. So much so, time for for her. So so nice. Oh gosh, I bet that was amazing though, just to star opposite him. You know. Well, when we found out that he was going to be in the show, it was just 
oh, can you get a bigger star to yeah. come over to the West End and do that? It was um, so exciting. And I remember we had um, security at the back gate and yeah. people would absolutely fill the road afterwards. And he yeah. always went out, he always went out and said, he was like, I'm not going to do, not in a starry way, but it's like, I won't do photos and autographs because we'll all be here yeah. all night. But I just wanted to come out and say thank you so much. And just, yeah. it was just very lovely. Yeah. Um, but when yeah, it was kind of crazy. Was that? When, when was that, Sammy? That was, two, I want to say, I'm probably going to get it wrong, um, 2006. I don't, know whether, I don't know whether years ago. I honestly can't oh. remember what I did yesterday, let alone years ago. <laughs> well, gosh, on that one, I think that's a perfect one to finish on. But uh -huh. um, <laughs> have you got anything, like I said, that you just want to share with everybody? Um, any um, activity or anything? I uh, just want to say to everybody, just keep pushing forward don't give yourself a hard time we're all going through this we find some days super easy and some days really difficult and that is normal we are only human and we're dealing with something that none of us ever expected we would have to deal with um so that's the most important thing sounds good um so have you got anything that you would like to just finish on and just tell us about yourself have you got anything just interesting what's coming up what's obviously your album i know that yeah um, and my lullabies album and then i've got a couple of other mummy projects mm -hmm. so they'll be kind of combining being a performer with a mummy so um oh, i'm gonna get on those but i have to just do one thing at a time yeah. the multitasking thing has just gone out the window <laughs> so once, once the album is out i'll move on to the next one but um yeah i'm just gonna you know just go just go with it because what else can we do well, yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, well, I think you're doing incredible. You look, you sound like you're doing incredible. Look like you're doing incredible. So can't wait for the album and lots. Uh, of um, thanks, thanks to your product. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. oh yeah. Quick oh, that's actually that is that is genuinely one thing I'm slightly obsessed with softer skin it's like uh, I've told so many people and my I've never been really happy with my skin and so many people especially recently and I've been using it for a while now about a year have been like god your skin's really glowy and I just go you need to just check out this woman and you need to get this stuff in your life and loads of girls have got oh my god I've got it and I'm never buying anything else ever oh, again so um, that makes me happy tagged in a few things and I was like on the softer silk and people have ordered it and I had all these orders come through and I was like okay and they just ordered this one <laughs> and it's just like oh i don't know who these people are you know they've not uh, and then I, well, I was like try this first and then have a look at the other things but oh. for me i mean i use it morning and night but yeah. it's like my moisturizer but i found that as i'm in my 40s i just need it i just my yeah. skin just goes <laughs> but um i love it oh, love thank it you. thank you genius <laughs> quick plug. Thank you. Quick plug. <clears throat> absolutely oh. too right Oh, it's been so good chatting to you. I have loved it. Um, oh, and thank you too. Thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. My it. pleasure. <laughs>